here we have the inside of the 2020 Melio 286. Firstly, we will go to the main control panel and turn it on. So if we firstly press this one here, it will illuminate. Now we want to turn the 12 volt one on. Once we've done that, you will then see lights etc have all come on. Now we want to turn the water pump on, so we just press this one here. Water pump needs to be on so we can get water out of the taps, flush the toilet and refill the boiler if it's been drained down. This button here just turns the awning light on outside. Buttons beneath mainly just give us information, so this first one here will let us know the condition of the leisure battery. The next one will let us know the condition of the vehicle battery. This one will let us know how much fresh water is on board. When your waste tank needs emptying, a red light will start to flash next to the waste tank symbol. And when the fresh water drops out of the last amber into the red, this amber light will again flash to let you know that you're getting low on water. And if either of the batteries were low, again, you will get a visual flash. This last button here just controls the illumination of the control panel. So if you are sleeping in the higher position in the drop down bed, you can dim it off so the light is not annoying you. Just hold it and it works like on a dimmer switch. This illumination here is letting us know that we have main supply connected to the van and the one above it will illuminate when you start the engine to let you know the alternator is charging the batteries. Below this control panel we then have the controller for the Truma heating and hot water. Currently the panel is just displaying the time and letting us know that we have main supply connected with a little picture of the plug just there. If I now press this button in, it will illuminate and you will see all these icons and as I begin to rotate the button, they start to flash. If we start with the first icon here, this is for your heating. So you'll see currently the heating is off. All we now need to do is just rotate and pick a temperature we would like it to be inside the motorhome. So let's just say we want it to be 30 degrees in here. Just click on it. That will then store in and you will now see a little flames appeared above. That little flame there just represents the heating system. It's just letting you know that you've set a parameter. Whenever the heating is actually in operation, this little flame here will begin to flash to let you know. There we are. After your heating, we then have hot water. So again, just click on it. Hot water is off. We can heat hot water in eco mode, which will give us a temperature of about 40 degrees. We can heat in hot, which will give us a temperature of about 60. And we can also perform a boost on the boiler. The boost is extremely handy if there's more than one of you having showers in quick succession of each other, or if you want a longer shower. If you do perform the, perform the boost and the heating is running, it will turn the heating off because it needs to rob the power to be able to do it. But I will now drop it into hot. Next we have power source. So we're currently using main supply at 2 kilowatts indicated by the two little lightning strikes above. We can obviously change that setting from 2 kilowatts to 1 kilowatt if we're on a low amp site. Stops us from tripping. We can run in dual fuel so we can run on a mixture of the gas supply and mains at 2 kilowatts or a mixture of the gas supply and mains at one. Dual fuel is very handy, especially in the winter months if you want to get up to temperature really quickly. It will only use gas as it is required. If you do not have any main supply connected, we then run the system on gas. But I will now go right the way back to electricity. There we go. You will see that the hot is not flashing because I've already preheated the water. Next we have circulation fan for the heating system. 
the fan can either run in eco or high. If I now return and I turn everything back off again, and now go back to that fan, you will see that we can use the fan also to vent the motor home. It has a fan speed of 1 to 10, so if it's a very warm day you can just circulate the air. Next we have the lower icons. This first one here is for a basic timer. So if I now click on it, it will ask you when you want the timer to start. Just pick the time and then pick a finish time. And then just pick what you want on within that time period. So let's say we want the heating at 20. The water in eco. We do want to be using dual fuel. Fan in eco. Once you activate the timer, the timer icon will come up there and then within that time period those settings would then apply. If I now turn the timer back off again, when we return to it, we can obviously alter it again. Your next one is just literally your clock set and then this one here is your settings menu. So you have offset which is just for the thermostat just here if you don't think it's quite correct you can just tweak it by a few degrees. Temperature just if you prefer it in Celsius or Fahrenheit. Brightness of the screen 12 or 24 hour clock. Language. Index just for technicians and full factory reset. From time to time these units will throw up error codes. They're usually something relatively basic so if you're running on main supply and you trip etc it will let you know. If you're running on gas and your gas runs out it will let you know. An error code will appear where my finger is here. It will come up as a warning triangle. If you then click on it it will display a series of letters and numbers and then within the manual or if you go onto Truma's website or even just Google it, it will let you know what the problem is. Nine times out of ten, as long as you rectify the problem, the error code will just disappear. If that's not the case, and it doesn't just disappear automatically, go back to it and double press, and it will then usually then say no error and disappear. If that hasn't worked, make sure you've got nothing running up the top here. If that still doesn't work, it's the good old fashioned turn it off, turn it back on again. Just hold the button in until it says off. Once off has disappeared on the screen, you can then turn it back on again. If when you turn it back on, you still have an error code, I always then say factory reset it. Sometimes these just need a hard reset. If you hold it, and then let go at the app point it's then in a semi dormant state so you can control it using the Truma app if you are going to use the Truma app you do need to come to the box just up here as you can see what you need to do is download the Truma app onto your device and then once you've done that you need to make sure that your Bluetooth is turned on and then launch the app. When you launch the app you need to press a button that says remote control and then follow the on-screen instructions. It will firstly ask you to come to this point here, press this button and it will send out the Bluetooth signal. You will then commence connecting up to your device once you've done that you will then be able to control your heating and your hot water locally via Bluetooth. What you can also do is buy a pay as you go SIM card. It then locates into the slot here where my finger is. You then register it through the app and then you can then control your heating and your hot water from much further afield. Whilst we're in this overhead locker we also have in here the Teleco digital amplifier for the television aerial on and off on the side here and then control the boost just here. The television itself just attaches here and then up the top you will see that we have aerial fly lead point in 
12 volt and also a main socket. Beneath this locker we have the fridge freezer. To turn the Fetford fridge on just hold this button in. The beauty of this particular model is that it's an auto so if I just hold this button in and you'll see it now starts to flash. If I now use the arrows and I'll find the one where it says A and now click on it and then pick our temperature. Because we're now into automatic mode it will find the best power source it can for us. So because we're hooked up to main supply at the moment it's put us directly onto mains. If I now ran outside and pulled the mains lead out it would then automatically attempt to fire itself up onto gas and as soon as we start the engine it will then put itself over to 12 volt maintain. We can take it out of auto just by holding this button in and then picking manually but auto is the easiest function to have it on. And then we have a nice large freezer box and fridge and also a pull out part at the bottom. Next we have the location of the consumer unit and boiler. So if we just remove these cushions just here. And now lift up. You will see here we have the battery charger. We then have all of the trip switches just here with the test button and the 12 volt fuses just here. To be fair if you are going to blow a 12 volt fuse it is going to be one of those yellow 20 amp ones and it will usually be the one for the drop down bed up here. If you have too much stuff on that bed and you raise it back up again and the motor goes under too much stress it will pop a fuse to protect itself. So if that happens, obviously just replace the fuse and it will then work again. We also have this part here, which is for the solar panel, etc. You will see currently the solar charge status and at the moment it is currently charging the vehicle battery. On the other side, we then have the location of the Truma Combi boiler to drain the boiler down it is done just on this little blue triangle just here all we need to do is basically make sure the water pump is turned off come to this blue diamond and twist it when we twist it a blue button is going to pop out as you can see to close it back up again twist and push and that will then reset it and then all we need to do is make sure we've got water in the fresh water tank, turn the water pump on and it will then begin to fill the boiler back up again. I always suggest when fully draining down for winter, once you've drained both your fresh and your waste tanks and you've drained all the water out of the boiler, then go round and open up all of the taps. That way if there is a harsh frost and it freezes inside the van hopefully the water will be forced out the end of the taps into icicles instead of expanding in the pipework and splitting them if you do forget to drain down this boiler it is not the end of the world with these particular drain valves as they are automatic so if the temperature in here drops below three or four degrees the blue button will automatically pop out and then all the water will release when you come back to it, all you need to do is push it back in to reset it. If you're pushing it back in and it's just popping back out, it's probably still too cold in the motorhome and you will need to turn your heating on before it resets. If you are 
running, your heating and your hot water on gas, you cannot open this window here. The reason being that the flue sits underneath this window. So you will see here we have a pressure switch. So if I now open this window up, the pressure switch will be released and it would then automatically stop the boiler to then stop giving ourselves carbon monoxide poisoning. Just down beside the driver's seat, there is a little switch just here. It is on when it's illuminated. This switch here just controls the tank heater in the waste tank. So again, if you are using the van in extremely cold climate and you've got water going into your waste tank that you cannot drain out straight away, you can turn the tank heater on and it will stop it from freezing up and cracking the tank. The fresh water tank does not have one because it's an internal. So if we just remove these cushions just here. You will then see the location of the fresh water tank. You will see the water pump just sits on top of it. We can also gain access to it just here if you want to add cleaning powders, etc. Whilst we've got the cushions off, if you are going to be using the two travel seats to drop this section down, you have a lever here and exactly the same this side. And if I now pull them both, you can then drop out of the way. Next we have the Omnivent fan just up here. So to open the roof vent just twist and then to turn the unit on and off we press the middle button just here and then we have arrows out for extraction and arrows in for cooling. Variable fan speed just by pressing. Do make sure that we are down for travel. We then have the extractor fan just here, on and off, and then we have lights, and then the extraction point out of the van. We have the two gas rings and one electric hot plate. Hot plate on and off just here. And then push in twist for the rings. We then have the oven and grill, so push in to the right for the oven. And then if I then go back to off again and then go the opposite way, we then have the grill. The gas isolation taps are just in the cutlery drawer just here. So they all sit along the top here. So we want to make sure that they're all in this position here, in the on position. There is no real need to turn them off. It's more for maintenance than anything else. I always say smell gas in the van, go and turn the gas bottle off. We then have the microwave just here. Do make sure that the contents are removed for travel. 
and then it behaves very much like any microwave. You've got high, medium, high, medium, medium, low, low, and then your timer just here. If we now go into the washroom, we have the toilet just here to open and close from the cassette we just use this lever here and then push the blue button to flush do make sure that this is closed or you will not be able to remove the cassette from the outside the level indicator for the cassette just sits here so this green square will rotate round to red when it needs emptying the light switch in here is quite well hidden so it just sits underneath the vanity cabinet just there and then we have the shower do make sure that the screen is properly secured for travel and then we have the wardrobe we also have another large wardrobe just here and we have pull down steps so we can get right to the back of it. We can also gain access to the garage space as well. If we do forget how to make up the lower front bed, it is illustrated just here, but it is incredibly simple to make on this model. All we are basically doing is getting the two wooden slats from the garage they then just rest on these plimps and the same just here once they've rested across we then basically slide the cushions out to the center so it basically just leaves a hole just here and then this infill then just goes in the middle the drop down bed just operates on the switch just here we can have it in a higher position so we then just attach the ladder just here and here and we also have sitting underneath it netting that can then hook up to the roof if we are having it in the lowest position so it's just hovering above the cushions just here do make sure that all the lower lights are turned off so you do not scorch the upholstery if the bed was to malfunction so it cannot be lowered or raised we can do it manually you'll see at this point here if I now just remove this little black cap you'll see there that there's a 13 mil nut and then you just use the winding tool just here